so low. But look how much more miles I have. Nice. You got water pool. That's, that's smart. Just yeah. the connection points. Hey guys, Kim Java here. So there's one subject that seems to come up time and time again for Tesla owners. I've seen it as a hot button issue on forums too when you're traveling and charging your EV and it even sparks a debate every time we feature unique ways we've charged our Tesla on road trips to rental properties. So today I'm going to share with you some footage that we filmed a few months ago that we've actually never published and wanted to bring some attention to this topic because it just keeps on coming up over and over again. But before I get started, I wanted to remind you that this is your last chance to enter to win a 2021 Performance Model Y while donating to two incredible charities, and I will tell you more about it later, but the drawing is in just a few days, so if you wanted to check it out now, go to charitystars.com slash kimjava. All right, so over the past five years, we've taken you guys on around 30 or 40 Tesla road trips. We are about to charge our car from the tiny house. This is a regular wall outlet right here. So you can see there's the level one charger. Yeah, we asked them if they're gonna have a plug and they verified they would. Oh, we did find a 110 outlet right here. I've got the extension cord for a NEMA 1030. And we have a NEMA 1030 adapter here. The washer and dryer back here. And every time we post a travel vlog, we get questions about how we find our chargers at our destinations. And usually it's as simple as just checking the Tesla website, but during COVID and especially with our growing family, we like to rent homes on sites like Airbnb. I'll literally analyze pictures of the rental properties and look for wall outlets or even dryers near garage or especially near windows. And I'll reach out to the property owners and tell them that we're driving an EV and ask if they have a wall outlet anywhere outside or near the property for us to charge. So with all that said, a couple of months ago, we went on a weekend getaway with our neighbors and also our quarantine friends who also happened to have the twin of our Model X. The closest thing that just yeah. ever happened, our <laughs> wings started coming up and I thought for sure the wings were gonna hit and look at Sensors work. <laughs> okay, hold on. Don't don't close don't close your door. Don't close your door. You close the door first. Please close the door. Liam, Liam, close the door, please. Do not close that door. Oh my gosh. Okay, they're not gonna listen. There we go. One at a time. One at a time. We don't want to make a report. Who saw this? Who are you gonna pay for who? And we found a really awesome house with external 110 outlets. Nice place, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. And that's what I just found. I told you they would have a level one charger <laughs> and then right over here, you could easily pull your car up right here and charge. We're, we haven't even been here 30 minutes. They're so already like, have the grill, the fire going. I wish that you guys could smell it if there was like smell vision because it smells so amazing right now. It's really good. It kind of reminds me of lychee or lychee. Or yes, tropical uh, fruit look like um, Corona virus. <laughs> oh no, it's not appropriate. It's really good though. We have sugar cookies and then we have these fancy little Tesla cookie cutters. They're pretty cool. There's a couple of them. Look at this. Do you recognize this, guys? <laughs> but, you know, as if this cyber truck was really hard to draw in the first place. <laughs> Probably what Franz you used to design it, a cookie yeah. cutter. You know, you it know. was designed by a six-year-old originally. <laughs> the pulpit rock there's no one around so I can take off my mask but man it's gorgeous we're up here like pretty much the same level as the clouds um, spectacular yeah. um, I 
by with my little brown eye. It's silver Model X. Takes me back to our first Model X that started Whoa. it all. So you think you were right? Bring it on, prove me wrong Go put up a fight mm -hmm. The way I do, way I do will knock you down So we are going to try to plug in Chuck's He's got a brand new extension cord There's Chuck charging Is it, is it a waterproof? So um, I, I could I think it is, but that is, that's smart. Just yeah. the connection point since it's yeah. going to rain tonight. I'm getting about two miles per hour of range. After the trip, we were surprised to get an email regarding charging our vehicles. And to be completely honest, we hadn't mentioned it ahead of time since we didn't know if we'd be able to until we got there. And even then, we just used the external 110 volt. But before I forget, I want to remind you that this is your final chance to support an incredible charity while getting a chance to win a 2021 Performance Model Y. We've teamed up with Charity Stars, who's giving you a fully loaded Performance Y. You get a zero to 60 of 3.5 seconds, over 300 miles of range, and arguably the best car Tesla has ever made. Best part, they'll pay the taxes and shipping if you're in the US. The fundraiser supports two amazing charities, Cure Addiction Now and Race to Erase MS. They're also including a Tesla wall charger, two van move electric bikes, and $10,000 of cash. So go to charitystars.com slash Kim Java to donate. So the owner had security cameras and saw us plug in. And here's the email that we got. My business partner and myself had an interesting conversation after you guys checked out. We had never had anyone charge their cars at the house. We weren't sure how we felt about it. So I went on the Airbnb forum to get other hosts experience. It was kind of split. Some encouraged it and just absorbed the cost of the electricity. Some said they would have asked for money. We're totally okay with it and would welcome you back anytime, but it got me thinking that maybe I should address it in our house rules. Out of all of our road trips, this is the first time that we've received an email like this. And keep in mind that we vlog our experiences, so the owners often see that we use their properties for charging. In fact, a few years ago, we posted this video and the owners included the vlog on their website as a selling point. Regardless, we should have definitely alerted the owner once we decided to plug in. However, the free charging mindset seems to have mixed viewpoints across the EV and Tesla space. And as more people switch to driving EVs, this might become a major issue. So should charging your EV be free or is this something renters should pay extra for? You already know that a lot of businesses and hotels incentivize customers by offering free charging at their business, especially since the cost to charge up is a fraction of gassing up. Take a look at this post though that I came across on the Atlanta Tesla group. It's a gorgeous beach house on the Florida panhandle with EV charging. But the comment section exploded because the owner wanted to charge $10 a day for charging. Some responded by saying, I've never heard of anyone charging people for using the charger at an Airbnb since it's so cheap. Do you charge people for charging their phones or laptops too? And others even saying, do all Airbnbs give you a $20 gas cards if you drive a gas car? I'm curious what you guys think about this hot topic. So here is what I believe and what we told the owner of the property that we stayed at. We tried to be respectful and use this opportunity as a moment to educate as well. Being an electric vehicle owner for nearly a decade, I can assure that the cost incurred in charging the Tesla was pretty negligible. In fact, at a rate of roughly 10 cents per kilowatt hour, and given the 110 volt wall outlet the vehicle was plugged into, the cost for the two evenings of being plugged in comes out to little more than a dollar a night. The washer and dryer, AC units, and hot tub would surely draw more than that in a matter of hours. One of the biggest misconceptions of EV ownership is the draw on electricity, but even a full charge, which would take more than three days of being plugged into a normal wall outlet, would only cost roughly $8. I'll happily pay that cost, but just wanted to share some reference 
from when it comes to possibly incurring charges on future renters as the EV market expands in the coming years. I also told them how adding a charger at the property would probably incentivize more future renters just by that fact alone. And using this approach, the owner was very receptive and even asked for a picture of the cars in front of the house. So I think a lot of people just don't even realize that even a simple external 110 volt wall outlet would be extremely helpful for EV owners and help make their properties appeal to more people. So very recently, Airbnb has added EV charging as an amenity option for owners listing their property, but it's so early on in the game that you can't even search for that um, as a renter yet. Of course, having a rental property show up on sites like PlugShare can really add visibility to a property and attract a certain type of renter. So I personally do believe in the free charging mindset and I think it should be built into the cost of staying at a location. But I'm curious what you guys think about this. If you or someone that you know rents out a property, please share this video with them so that we can get their thoughts and make sure you comment below what you guys think about all this and let's get that discussion going about it. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure that you're subscribed and you've hit that bell for notifications. And lastly, don't forget that the drawing to win the 2021 Performance Model Y while supporting two great charities is happening in a few days. Check out charitystars.com slash kimjava to donate. Until next time. Chuck, you know we gotta share supercharging speeds now. I know, I know. That's why I, I, I wanted to ask you which one. <laughs> They're so both you, uh, yeah, they uh, say, next to each other. R2 white Model Xs and a solo and Model 3. For, uh, for uh, two cyber, future cyber trucks. Yep, cyber trucks are coming right there. Yeah. <laughs> if they can fit. Let's see how much Chuck The Tesla. Much? You make any money today, Chuck? Absolutely, every day. <laughs> That's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> then next day you're gonna lose the same amount. Why XX? XX? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so cool. It's so cool to see it next to yep. um, the Model X. So the back looks like the Model X, but then from the side it looks like the Model X.